In this class of our tutorial, uh, we want to model a parametric facade, something similar to this image. So uh, we have this image and we want to make something similar to that. And you can see it by increasing the height, I want to make these windows uh, become a little bit extruded in the y direction. In the y direction. And as you can see, I can change the dimension of the facade and number of the panels. And we're going to flatten uh, some of these windows, something similar to this. And then we can control uh, the height, the minimum and the maximum of the height. And as the uh, height of the building increases, these windows become a little bit extruded. So this tutorial will help you to understand how to use the uh, centroid of these windows to extract the Z component and to go up. So first step, what we want to do is to uh, make the base panels with Launchbox. We're going to use the Launchbox plugin uh, and some good tools to extract uh, the two type of windows we have here. Before we start this tutorial, if you're new to our channel, the Parametric House channel, remember to subscribe because we have weekly tutorials on architecture, art, and design. And uh, I'm going to put up a playlist uh, if you're new to Grasshopper, if you want to learn the basics, uh, watch it up here. Uh, it has the basics why you have to learn Grasshopper, the basics uh, of the tools and those things. And also, if you want to uh, be a professional gra uh, Grasshopper designer, learn more about Grasshopper, we have also more lessons for the course members. I'm going to put up the lessons up here. You can check it out. We have several tutorials in the week, so you can check that out too. Okay, let's get started from scratch. Uh, what we want to do is to go to the surface. And here in the primitive, I want to make a plane surface. So the plane surface is easily uh, uh, the base surface of the facade, right? which we want to work on it. So I'm going to just put this plane surface and I'm going to use the bifocals plugin to show you the names, okay? The plane is obviously an XZ plane because we want to put it up. And by default, the input of the X size and the Y size is a domain, a minus number to something, but I'm going to give it a number slider by double clicking and typing a number. And by this technique, I'm going to make the domain a zero to that number. So that's the trick we can use. This is the X size, and this is the Y size. So I'm going to freeze that and make it something like this. Okay, that's the base, uh, for the, the base surface for the facade. What I want to use here is a lunchbox tool, which is really cool. And let's just go to the L here, lunchbox, and in the panels, uh, there is a uh, staggered quad panels. I'm going to use that staggered quad panels, give it to the surface, turn this off, right click preview off, and now we can control the dimensions of the U and the V, the count of the division. I'm going to type maybe from 3 to 12 for the U and the V. So based on your project, you can increase the number of these divisions uh, on the facade. Okay, uh, the problem with this staggered quad panels is that it's going to give you a series of untrimmed surfaces, which is two types. Let me increase this one. I guess this one is the height, so I'm going to just double click and increase the number slider range. Okay, uh, what we want to do based on the image, let me just turn back to the image is that assume that this is the first set of panels, which is the bricks, and this one is near the edge, right? Something similar to that. It's not obviously the same as this, but it's uh, similar. So you can see that this is the panels at the edge, and these are the panels we want to make it for the windows, which I will explain. Uh, so here we go. We have to do something to extract two series of panels the edges and the bricks. Uh, what we want to do is to do a trick. You can go to the surface and use this area tool and find the area of these surfaces. You can see that the panels have, let me just zoom in, the panels has two set of areas, uh, 10 and 5. So we have to use this number to extract them. What I want to do is to use the sort tool 
and say sort these tools from minimum to maximum of the areas and pick up the first one which we want to say that the areas which are bigger than this number and smaller and pick up the two things so uh, what we want to do is to you can even right click and reverse it the reverse will give you uh, the biggest to the smallest which we can pick the biggest uh, I'm going to do with reverse go to the sets section and pick the data with the list item so I'm going to pick that up and you can see that we have by using this technique we can have the maximum area which is the biggest panels okay now what we want to do is to uh, make a logics uh, a logic which we want to extract those panels if you're in the course we have a complete section on about the logics we have talked on several examples but if you want to also learn a little bit of this I don't know uh, if we have talked about it but I want to uh, put up a free tutorial also if you want to learn the basics but if you want to get into it and learn uh, obviously learn it better you have to go and enroll in the uh, course section because we have talked these in steps but for now what we have to do is to say uh, we want uh, in the mathematics bigger and smaller I'm going to go to smaller than and say okay these areas are smaller than this number okay the problem with this one is that you can see that all of them is the true uh, but uh, we have to have some true and some false, right? Because some of them are smaller uh, from this number. Uh, what I want to do is to make this number uh, assume, let me say that we have two series of panels. We have this one, which is 10, and this one, which is 5. And because we are giving the exact number for the smaller than, it's going to assume that all of them are smaller than 10. So what, so what I want to do is to make this number a little bit smaller. So for example, if I say, uh, let me type this here, 0 0.9 multiplied by 10, which is going to give it 9. Some of them are going to be bigger and some of them are going to be smaller. So I'm going to go to the second number expression and say, make it a little bit smaller, maybe 90% multiplied by x x is the input and now we will have some true and some false this is the way we can dispatch them and we're going to use dispatch and dispatch all of these panels based on the list we have uh, talked about the dispatch in that tutorial so check it out and use these true and falses to bring them into two groups okay i'm going to turn everything off and go to the params menu, connect a surface to the list A. You can see that we have the edges and the list B for that one. Okay, another technique you can use instead of using the biggest, you can just uh, take the smallest and then instead of uh, smaller than, you have to use bigger than, and instead of 0 0.9, you have to use something like 1.1 1 .1, uh, multiplied by x. The logics is the same. You have to make it bigger. So some of them are going to be smaller and those things. Okay, so remember you can uh, also use that technique. Okay, we have these panels. And from this image, uh, what I want to do here is to assume that this is the this panel. Uh, I'm going to pick up the mid edge on this edge and this edge connected with a line. Move it in the normal direction. So it's going to be like this and then connect these edges together. That's it. That's going to make us the base of the facade. So what I want to do here is let's just turn this off and go here one. I'm going to go to the surface and pick up this deconstruct B rep. It's going to give us edges for obvious. Uh, obviously, it has four edges. One, two, three, four. And again, we're going to use the set list item to pick it. Pick it up. One, two, three, four. Turn this off. We have the four edges. For example, if I connect a curve to this, you can see it connects down here, then it goes up, and then the top, and then the edge on here. So what we have to do is to use the top and the bottom. So I'm going to use this edge and this edge. And use uh, 
tool which is called curve and uh, let's just go here evaluate curve evaluate curve will extract a point from a curve so that's obviously what we want to do remember to right click and reparameterize always because it's going to make it from 0 to 1 and the curve will be just like uh, normalized so now if I give this a number slider like 25% because it's between 0 and 1 you can see that this edge is uh, from 0 to 1 can be extracted for the top if I put it at the top you can see that the top is uh, uh, let's talk about this one this is the bottom edge and this is the top edge but the directions are different so when you say 25% it's going to be here and for the top it's going to be here what we have to do is to say this one uh, has to be like 1 minus x so it's going to be the same I'm going to just type in the parameters expression and 1 minus x and now you can see that it's the same okay if I go to the curve and use this line Uh, you can see that we are actually extracting a line from this panel. Okay, before we do that, let's just bring these points a little bit forward. So I'm going to use move, move this point and this point, control C, control V, in the normal direction because we have used this panel. Uh, remember the XZ plane, the normal direction is in the Y direction. So if you're changing that to another plane, remember that we have to change that. So for now it's a Y. And before that, uh, because it's going to go inwards, I'm going to give that a minus X in the expression. So it's going to be a negative one and bringing it forward, okay? For now, I just want to give this a simple number slider. So all of them are going to go forward the same amount. Then we're going to introduce the height for now. Okay. And let's just connect that with a line with two set of points. Turn this off. Now you can see that we have these lines coming forward. Okay. Now what we have to do is to connect these edges again together to form the surface. Uh, we have the edges here. Let me just control C, control V for this edge and this edge. These are the two edges. Bring it here. And now we have to connect that together. Okay. Because these are in groups, uh, we don't want to talk about flatten and graft, but you can see that all of them are in uh, data trees. So it's like group one, group two till the end. Uh, the first set is also like that. If you don't know about these things and you want to learn about the groups in the course, we have a complete section which we talk about each of them, each one of them. But if you want to just learn it fast, maybe you just want to have an overview, I will put up a lesson which is about flatten and graft. Just about to know about the data trees. And now what we have to do is to go to the surface and select a loft. A loft is going to be from this edge. I'm going to use the shift key to add the second one and then shift to add the third one. And because the direction is different, you can see that it's going from here to here and then it's twisting back. I'm going to go to the option, loft options, and say align sections, I'm going to change. And because we don't want to make it like a NURBS one, option, loft options, and select straight, change, and that's it. So that's how we can control that, bring it forward. That's the first step. So now, uh, obviously, we have to change this and make this parametric. Uh, how can we do that? Uh, because we want to, let me just show you in the building, for example, assume that by increasing the height, it's going to uh, be increased. We have to use these panels. Let me just go to here. Uh, find the area. This is a technique we have used also in coloring uh, the surfaces. We have a tutorial about that. You can search for it. But for now, if I just select an area, uh, you can see that each of these panels has a centroid. What is important for us is that this uh, centroid uh, has a Z, right? 
So for example, this is the Z for this one, this is the Z for this one, and this is the Z for this one. This is the numbers we are going to use to say, uh, according to these Z's, let that extrusion for the windows uh, be bigger or smaller, right? So we have to extract the Z. I'm going to go to the vector and use this here, deconstruct, and have this Z component here. Now what we have to do is to scale these numbers of the Z component to what we want. What we have to use, I'm not going to use the remap plus because some of you have uh, asked that how can I use the remap numbers of grasshoppers. So what you can do is just type remap numbers. That's the remap numbers you have. We want to scale these Z components from these are the values. This is the source domain and this is the target domain. The source domain it can be easily extracted by going to the math and using this bounce. It's going to find the domain of the target. So I'm going to give that to the Z. And it's going to say it's from like whatever, 1.2 to 45. We're going to give that to the source. That's the best way you can actually use the, instead of the remap plus, you can make it like that. And the target is a domain. So I'm going to go to the math and use construct domain. And use two number sliders to define the minimum and the maximum. For example, from 0 0.25 to maybe 5.55. The minimum and the maximum. That is going to be uh, uh, inserted instead of this static number, right? Uh, so what I want to do is to, if I give it here, it's going to multiply that in all of those panels. You can see that's wrong. Here we have to know that this one is not in groups and uh, the data tree is not right so what you have to do is to right click or and graft here or graft it here doesn't matter and again if you don't know about flatten and graft you can check out the uh, flatten and graft lesson i put up in the cards okay that's it you can see that this is increasing uh, from by increasing the height and you can also change it to maximum and minimum if you want. For example, you want to decrease it by height based on your project. So remember, you can always change the minimum and the maximum, turn everything off. And here have, we have this locked windows. Okay, we also had the second series of surfaces, which was for the edges and now let's go to the next step a little bit <laughs> a long tutorial so what i want to do is to go to the launch box and use this cool tool we have here panel frame okay uh, the panel frame if you give it to the loft it's going to give you something like that these windows are going to go inward let me just bake this layer one and layer two it's going to be something like this one, okay? But this is not what we want. We just want to uh, have a flat window. But this is also a trick you can use, and LaunchBox will accept this. So the reason uh, this is happening is that because these are poly surfaces, not singular surfaces of nerves, uh, we can just fix that by going to the surface and exploding. Uh, deconstructing these B reps uh, or, or poly surfaces into singular surfaces. So we're going to just do that and select the faces. That's it. And the scale factor is a number between 0 and 1, 85% maybe. For example, and we have it. Let's just use this. Uh, display custom preview to give it a color, for example, for the frames and the windows. And I usually use swatch to just visualize what I want to do. So here is the frame. Maybe 
black. This one is like for windows. You can also change this A to give it a little bit of a transparency, like this one. Okay, uh, we have to also use that for the edge panels. So I'm going to use the shift key and add it here and turn this off. Obviously, it will give us also these frames. That's really cool. And that's the power of Grasshopper, which you can actually plug in the inputs and get good results. Okay. The last step is to make it something similar to this, a little bit of like a solid. So what can we do? Uh, the way I'm going to use it, you can use different ways to produce that, is to, for example, uh, extrude this edge to this point and produce this surface, extrude this edge to this point and make that surface the second surface. So I'm going to go to the surface, preform, and use this extrude to point. And now what I want to do, uh, we extracted these edges. Let's just connect the curve to see which one was that. Yes. This one is, okay. This is the first one. And this is the bottom, this is the top. So I'm going to say, okay, extrude from this base curve to point, we move that point here. That's it. And again, just a copy. This time, this edge to this point. These are the two points which we made the line, and we got that. So now we can make another custom preview for the roofs. Maybe just a white one. And use this custom preview to give this to the roof and the floor. Turn this off. Okay. That's it. It's just turn off the transparency so you can see the results. Okay, that was the tutorial. It was a little bit hard, but I guess it's going to help you with your projects because uh, you can learn how to uh, use the parametric uh, Z dimension of those panels to extrude it like that. And you can also just swap the minimum and the maximum to do something like this one, and maybe even change the number of sliders to produce better results. Okay, that's really beautiful. And remember that you can control the minimum and the maximum here, whatever you want. That's it. So that was the tutorial of a parametric facade you can make in Grasshopper. And I hope that it's useful for you and you've used it in your projects. Uh, remember to subscribe to our channel, like this video so you can see other videos we publish in this YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out our course. We have more lessons there. If you want to really learn Grasshopper, uh, we suggest that you enroll in our course. And see you next time. Bye.